Thank you very much, uh, Mata. Uh, good to see you again, and also good to see you, Kat. Um, it's always a pleasure to join this program and to collaborate with the ACSS. Uh, this is indeed um, uh, a joy to, to speak on this particular issue. I will try to fit it in the 15 minutes that you've given me, uh, hopefully. Um, yeah, and I don't hope to, to go beyond. Um, organized crime has become one of the greatest threats to peace, security, stability, development, and social fabric of society in Africa. Even more dangerous is the fact that no single country has made the fight against organized crime a top national priority. Uh, this means that we are beating around the bush. But I hear all the times countries saying they have bigger priorities to provide peace and development to their people, meaning organized crime is not their priority. They tend to separate the fight against organized crime from their development effort. I have heard some leaders argue that organized crime exists because of a lack of development or due to poverty. From where I stand, I think this is misleading. Organized crime affects the rich, the poor. It affects big countries, small countries. So no one uh, is really free of organized crime. We cannot say it is uh, something that belongs only to uh, poor countries. This is not true. Uh, indeed, if we look even uh, deeper, we'll see that organized crime uh, is more prevalent um, in developed countries, especially the big uh, money-making schemes. Organized crime affects the entire society. So it is not the poor people who are the kingpins of organized crime. Uh, it is actually wealthy business people who are the ones committing the big organized crime schemes. Poverty only provides a recruitment tool or a recruitment pool for them. So these big conglomerates use their money to recruit poor people to do their dirty jobs. It cannot, therefore, be the root of the problem, meaning poverty. Organized crime has its biggest impact on poor and weak countries, countries that cannot defend themselves, countries that do not have resources. Uh, they are often in the front line. Uh, before I could continue, by organized crime, I mean the unlawful transactions or commercial activities carried out by a structured group or structured groups of three or more people acting in concert with the aim of committing illegal financial transactions in order to obtain financial benefit. And I think that's the key. Uh, there is no universal definition of organized crime. Uh, the UN Convention, the Palermo Convention, only defines what is an organized crime group. Uh, which is uh, part of what I've defined here, a structured group of three or more people acting in concert. We are witnessing a paradigm shift in the way organized crime manifests itself in Africa. This shift is driven essentially by the remarkable advances in technology during the past decade. In 2011, there were only about 19.2 million estimated smartphone subscribers in Africa. In 2023, the number skyrocketed to 489 million and counting smartphone subscribers. Some estimates indicate that there are over 514 million subscribers today, about 40% of the continent's population. 
and that by 2030, about 88% of the population of Africa will be subscribers of sm smartphones. This is incredible. This growing electronification of the continent has given new opportunities to organize crime criminal groups. We see increasing attacks targeting individuals with smartphones. Victims, victims' bank accounts are often wiped out within minutes. This is what technology brings. And we've seen this across, whether you are looking at vehicle theft, where that technology also plays out in a more visibly way. The organized crime economy in Africa is not just bigger, but it has been a growing it has been growing and alarming since 2009. Actually, in that year, the World Bank estimated the value of the revenue that accrued to organized crime in Africa to be $1.3 trillion. That same year, Africa's GDP was estimated to be nearly $1.7 trillion. Two years later, in 2011, the bank estimated the value of organized crime revenue to be $3.3 trillion, a 50% rate of growth per year. By contrast, Africa's GDP in 2011 was just over $2.2 trillion. In 2021, the African economy, comprising 54 countries, was estimated to be $2.7 trillion, representing a meager 2.8% of the world's GDP in nominal terms. The revenue that accrues to organized crime in Africa is estimated to be, this is in current terms, $3.6 trillion and $4.8 trillion, while the continent account for less than 3% of the global economy. Again, what we are trying to sh show here is that in some cases, the economy, the organized crime economy, the illicit economy in Africa, sometimes far exceed the former economy. This is a huge problem, and this is the biggest problem when it comes to development. The fact that a lot of the continent's resources are siphoned through these criminal channels. The current approach to organized crime, whether at the policy or operational level, is fragmented. State, African Union, and regional economic communities have chosen a thematic or piecemeal approach. As a result, separate and disconnected strategies or action plans and thematic conventions or protocols have been adopted for various organized crime issues, such as small arms and light weapons, human trafficking, cyber crime, wildlife crime, ETC. These strategies have failed to work because most often the same actors or groups of individuals that do arms trafficking also do human or drugs trafficking, human and drugs trafficking. So when you stop them in one, in doing, say, for example, arms trafficking, they just move into human trafficking. You stop them in human trafficking, they move into drugs, or they move into wildlife, or they combine all of them in one. This is the nature of organized crime that makes them extremely difficult to combat. It was... In this context, facing this difficulty in the study of organized crime, that the European Union decided to put in place a funding facility for the establishment of the INAX project, implemented by a consortium of three organizations, the Institute for Security Studies, the leading organization, Interpol, and the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. Since 2017, INACT has used evidence-based research, capacity building, training, and technical assistance 
to state, Pan-African organizations, including the African Union and the REC, the regional economic communities, as well as civil society organizations and academic institutions, to combat some of the major challenges to the fight against organized crime in Africa. The ENACT project now has one of the largest collections of research works on organized crime in Africa. We have spotlighted issues that have never featured in any studies or debate on organized crime. In addition to research, one of ENACT's biggest blueprint is the Africa Organized Crime Index, the OCI, which was launched in 2019 and is reviewed every two years. The latest index is the 2023 version, its third iteration. It is the first tool of its kind in Africa to systematically monitor organized crime, providing trends and comprehensive analysis on the challenging character, on the changing character of organized crime in Africa. While many indexes of this nature have the tendency to name and shame, the OCI is different. Its purpose is to help policymakers and researchers to have a bird eye view and to understand the dynamics of organized crime, its geographic locations, and progressive nature of state responses. The index approaches the problem from two perspectives. The first is criminality, which analyzes the environmental factors or the external environment to state. And secondly, the index is concerned about resilience, which analyzes the actions, character, and design of state that make them resilient to organized crime. The problem is not always about what organized crime groups do or don't do. The problem sometimes may be in the nature of the state themselves that make themselves vulnerable. One critical discovery of the trends between 2019 and 2023 was that criminality is rising faster than resilience. This means only one thing that state are not doing enough to combat organized crime. The one positive impact of the index is that countries now know what to do to increase resilience and lower criminality. Since the adoption of the index, we have seen a spike in the adoption of policy tools against organized crime. The Southern African Development Community, for example, has adopted or adopted an integrated regional strategy to prevent and combat organized crime in 2021. Central Africa, Central and East Africa adopted an interregional cooperation agreement in 2021 to empower law enforcement agencies to pursue criminal suspects across their borders. West Africa and Central Africa adopted a similar agreement in 2020. Central Africa has taken a further step to conduct a threat assessment of the dynamics of organized crime in the region and the policy and operational options for leaders in that region. Furthermore, the African Union has adopted two communiques to revitalize the fight against organized crime in Africa. To further underscore its importance, the Pan-African body held a summit on organized crime in Malabo in 2022, in which it also adopted far-reaching decisions, including the inclusion of organized crime in the, <clears throat> in the African Charter. Why they have 
certainly been a lot of talking. There hasn't been enough actions on the ground. The implementation of the policy instrument recently adopted, as well as international agreement ratified by African countries, remains a far cry. The implementation of this instrument is what will change the dynamics on the ground, not the adoption of paperwork. The index measures criminality, which is the prevalence or the pervasiveness of organized crime markets and the organized crime actors, the criminal groups themselves. The second aspect of the index is the resilience, which measures the, what measures uh, states have taken to help themselves be more resilient or resistant to organized crime or to help themselves defeat organized crime. Criminality is measured by 15 indicators, five of which are new and only featured in 2023 iteration of the index for the first time. The 15 indicators, the criminal market as we refer to them, include human trafficking, human smuggling, arms trafficking, flora crimes, fauna crimes, non-renewable resource crimes, heroin trade, cocaine trade, cannabis trade, and synthetic drug trade, and extortion and uh, protection racketeering, trade in counterfeit goods, illicit trade in excise goods, cyber dependent crimes, and financial crimes. The five, the, the last five are the newest of the criminal market or indicators that were added to the 2023 iteration of the index. The 2023 index shows us that human trafficking for the third year in a row is the most pervasive crime in Africa, scoring 6.06 .06 out of 10. This is followed by financial crimes, arms trafficking, non-renewable resource crimes, and fauna crimes. The index also measures the pervasiveness of criminal actors whose presence and activities in any country significantly elevate the threat of organized crime. There are five main criminal actors. These include state embedded actors, criminal networks, foreign criminal actors, mafia style groups, and private sector actors. The last one featured for the first time in the 2023 index. The ranking of the actors shows that state embedded actors for the third consecutive time have led the chart of most pervasive organized crime groups in Africa. This means that organized crime by and large is driven by state actors, scoring 7.12 out of 10. This is extremely high. This is followed by criminal networks, which scores 6.11, foreign actors, which scores 5.91, private sector actors, 4.80, and mafia style groups, being the least pervasive criminal actor in Africa with a scoring of 3.31. Thanks to the index, we can now compare regions and countries in Africa to see how each perform against criminality and resilience. With the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, Libya, 
and the Central African Republic, ranking the top five countries most impacted by organized crime. East Africa is ranked the top region with the highest organized crime impact. This is followed by West Africa, North Africa, Central Africa, and Southern Africa in that order. Resilience, on the other hand, is measured with 12 indicators comprising political leadership and governance, government transparency and accountability, international cooperation, national policies and laws, judicial system and detention, law enforcement, territorial integrity, anti-money laundering, economic regulatory capacity, victim and witness support prevention. Sorry, victims and witness support. Prevention is another category and non-state actors, the last one. These are the minimum measures that African countries are expected to take to boost resilience against organized crime. Of course, there are many more measures that countries can take, but for the purpose of the index, their performance and their ranking are based on these 12 uh, indicators. Changes in these indicators determine a country's resilience capabilities and ranking. The 2023 index shows that for the third time in a row, international cooperation is the most common resilient measure in Africa, scoring 5.03 out of 10. This is followed by national policies and laws, which scored 4.72. Territorial integrity, meaning when countries maintain that territorial integrity, that itself is a score because most often countries that face organized crime lose part of their territories, especially in the context of terrorism. We also have anti-money laundering, which scored 3.99 and non-state actors, which scored 3.88. The countries with the highest resilience scores are Cap Verde, surprisingly, a small West African island, which scores 6.58. Nigeria comes second, which scores 5.79. Senegal, 5.79. South Africa, 5.63, Mauritius, 5.54, and Rwanda, 5.54. These are the top five most resilient countries in Africa. The most resilient region in the 2023 index is West Africa with 4.28. You can see the scores are relatively smaller they are to criminality. West Africa is followed by Southern Africa with 4.22, North Africa 3.67, East Africa 3.46, and Central Africa 3.23. Why East Africa has the highest impact of organized crime? Central Africa has <clears throat> the lowest resilience scores. The immediate consequence of this index has been that countries are now increasingly becoming aware of how to measure, how to identify criminality and how to assess their resilience to the criminality. Through the analysis of the index, African countries can be grouped into four main quadrants the on the basis of the interplay 
between criminality and resilience, or the criminality resilience nexus, as we refer to it. The four quadrants are low criminality, high resilience, meaning we have countries that have low criminality and high resilience. There are only three in Africa, constituting 5.5% of, of African countries. We have countries with high criminality and high resilience. There are only three of them, high criminality, high resilience, meaning criminality is very high and resilience is also very high. There are only three in Africa, constituting also 5.5% of African countries. Then we have category three, which is low criminality and low resilience, meaning everything is low. Criminality is low, resilience is low. There are 27 countries constituting 50% of the 54 countries that are studied by the index. The last category is high criminality and low resilience, constituting 21% or 21 countries falling under this category, constituting 38.9% of African countries. Some conclusions can be drawn from the 2023 index, which help explain the dynamics of organized crime in Africa. These include, one, that criminality in Africa is rising much faster than resilience. Africa has now emerged as the continent with the second highest impact of organized crime after Asia. There is a strong nexus or mutual relationship between conflict and organized crime. We've seen that conflicts affect organized crime and organized crime affects conflict. Especially in Central Africa, we've actually seen where organized crime syndicate are deliberately triggering conflict by paying people to trigger conflict or giving them arms to start conflict. Because in conflict, they flourish, they thrive. Though democracies are not immune to organized crime, democratic values are found to contribute to building effective and sustainable responses to organized crime, which make them relatively more resilient to countries that do not have democratic values. The impact of organized crime is heavier in poor countries in poor and non-democratic societies. So where you have societies that are poor and non-democratic, you are likely to have uh, higher levels of organized crime. Organized crime has become highly permeable, embracing all forms of crimes. Local crimes become transnational, acquiring greater dimension and impact. This is what the index is also telling us. Over 500 million people in Africa live in societies or regions of low resilience and low criminality. This is worrying, meaning we are not ready to defend ourselves. What then can security sector do? Let me conclude with this uh, section. What are the recommendations for the security sector actors? The security sector actors can play an important role in addressing criminality and assisting their countries to boost resilience. First, they must adopt a whole of society approach that builds on partnerships, complementarity, and collaborative security with other stakeholders, especially the private sector, research institutions, and civil society organizations. Second, with the index and the growing body of evidence-based research, our knowledge of organized crime has significantly improved. This is good news for security sector actors, such as law enforcement agencies and the defense sector, 
It means that programming and budgeting can be directed and tailored to where there is problem, not like in the past where we uh, the budget without knowing exactly what was the problem. Uh, we just call it organized crime. But is it what? Is it wildlife crime? What kind of problem is it? Which regions of the countries are really faced by this? The index now provides us clear perspective of where to channel those resources. The problem could be resilience. We need to be able to identify it. The problem could be criminality. And once we identify where the problem is, the resources could be channeled to that. So uh, the security sector uh, actors can benefit from this clarity. The security sector actors can also evaluate their capacity vis-a-vis -vis the threat in order to determine clearly training need and strategies for mitigating criminality and strengthening resilience. We mean here that the security sector can use the index to kind of assess themselves also to understand what training need do they want and even to identify who to partner with, who is more strategic to provide what services that can help us overcome the challenge that we are dealing with. The index can support the security sector in that regard. This requires comprehensive and integrated strategies that build on military, security, political, social, economic, and developmental measures to address both the root causes and the drivers of organized crime. It requires law enforcement agencies to speak to each other and coordinate the approaches in a complementary manner. Any attempt to continue the securitized or milita militaristic approach alone without complementary political, social, and economic backstopping will have dire consequences. The increased complexity of organized crime suggests that a whole of society is key. It is therefore imperative for security sector actors to play a leading role in the establishment of a robust architecture for resilience. Such an architecture will help create synergies among countries, promote international cooperation and coordination, transparency and network of state and non-state actors. An important caveat which I want to leave you with is that we need also to address the nexus between terrorism and transnational organized crime, which actually cross fertilize each other. And it's a worrisome trend in the uh, uh, study of organized crime and also the fight against organized crime and terrorism in Africa. I thank you very much and wish you a successful program.